I've written a guide, I call it the survivalist guide. And uh, thanks to Sudha Senna, I can be with you in the stream and I'm looking forward to it. And he can, uh, he's so familiar with the game. But definitely over the past few months, he certainly played it a lot more than I have developing it. So I'm sure he's going to critique and point out all of the flaws uh, with my strategy and all <laughs> of the things that I'm about to do wrong. Um, yeah, until I make a huge mistake myself and we get shot by an, I don't know, an 88 millimeter or something. That's part of, that's, that should yeah. be part of the fun, right? Hopefully that should be part of the fun. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Um, so this is the, as I said, the new version. There's a, there's a lot of changes. There's going to be a full change log posted later today. Um, but really, compared to the last major version, there's really only two, two big changes to this. And I'll point them out when we run across them in the actual campaign. Uh, so I'm going to turn the sound on. There we go. Hopefully that's not too loud. Let's start a new campaign. Um, Florian and I talked about this earlier on. Uh, of course, at the moment, there's over a dozen campaigns. I don't know how many there are in total. Um, most of them are set in the early war period. Um, there's one campaign that's not part of the, the kind of the public release that we're still working on, Opera uh, Operation Torch, which is going to be the first of the mid-war campaigns, but there'll be many more to follow. Uh, the other publicly available ones are several um, late war campaigns that you can see some of them were created by Florian. Others benefited a great deal from his um, uh, contributions, creating new units and portraits and other content like that. Um, but for myself, of course, being originally from Canada, I think I'm gonna pick the one, so far the one Canadian um, campaign in the game. Um, I might, I don't know how long I'll be able to get through. I plan to stream for about maybe an hour and a half, two hours or so today. I don't know how many combat days I'll be able to get through, but what I, I was thinking about doing was adjusting the length uh, down so that what will likely happen is that the um, the combat days that we do play might be a little more spaced out. So we have a chance to see the kind of the summer weather and then into autumn and maybe if we're lucky get into winter um, as well. So we'll see that. Yeah. I doubt I can power through 14 days in two hours, but um, I can I can make a go of it anyway and see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's proceed let's try it. with this. I don't I already have a saved campaign, but honestly, I'm right at the moment I'm not playing any long term camp campaigns. It's all just being tested, so I don't mind overwriting this and starting it. So this is I'm trying to remember. Uh, it, this was part of the past. The the last major update, um, I think, added this, and there might be maybe a couple different options that were added in this update. But this is a relatively new addition. The, this set of campaign options. Um, if you scroll through. It tells you for each, and I have to add a menu. Yeah. I have to add a menu selection sound there. Yeah. The highest difficulty level you can go for is seventy-five percent. Um, if you if you turn on basically want to get everything. the firefly, yeah, if you want to get the firefly in any case, you'll have to turn off random tank model. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, it's a it's a one in three chance because there's just the, the Sherman two, Sherman five, and the firefly for this campaign. I think. Yeah, I think I like the firefly so much. Um, even though, as you'll see in this version, it's it's limited in other, it's limited in other ways. I think it's just too fun not to play. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to turn off fate points and just see how well I do. And I'll keep player commander on. I'll leave it up to fate. You know, the real thing as to how I do today. Um, realistic injuries and definitely realistic enemies. Um, Florian and I were, ch were chatting about this recently. At the moment, there's in terms of the AI, there's basically only two difficulty levels, whether this is on or off. But certainly in the future, it's possible to have a gradient and sort of you can go from very easy where the enemies don't really respond all that well and are basically sitting ducks all the way up to extremely aggressive sort of, you know, laser focused on destroying you, you know, very effective and yeah. everywhere in between. So I think I'll keep realistic enemies on for now because I think it, it provides a more inter interesting experience. But especially for new players, if you leave this off, you'll have a lot more leeway. And um, it'll the game will be much kinder for you. You can make more mistakes, and you have more time to to set yourself up to attack enemies before they destroy you, essentially. Um, so, what do you think? Does this look good to start? Yeah, sixty five percent sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Should uh, should get a fairly good VP score, at least over the over the yeah. the first few days. So early early level ups, experience points. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Def definitely. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to the, the Sherman VC. 
um, even though this model gives me minus 10% victory point modifier to have the long barreled um, 76 millimeter gun um, compared to these other two, which are okay. I mean, 75 is okay, but. Um, yeah. But in the, the 17 pounder is the, is the tank killer. Absolutely. That's the, that's the one that can shoot through the tiger front armor just like that. and Like a hot amazing. knife through butter, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a discarding sabot shell uh, through butter. You, you, lose a, you lose a crew man. Uh, you don't have, and you don't have the bow MG, the, the MG on the front, um, which yeah. with the other recent changes to infantry and the close combat weapons, that might, might end up being a bit of a problem, but we'll, we'll see. We'll try to keep my distance from him anyway. So I'm going to proceed. So here we go. Um, one thing about the Canada's Best and Patton's Best uh, missions is that they don't yet have these kind of um, detailed narrative descriptions of the different weeks. It's just very basic, but those will be added later. And I think all the other campaigns at present will give you a little narrative description of historically what's going on. What is the campaign? Are you attacking? Are you, are you withdrawing the kind of the big picture sense of where you are um, during the course of the war? You yeah. can, um, so you can see already, if you haven't tried out version 7.0, down here, this is one of the big differences from previous versions. Now, in addition to the air support and artillery support, you also have this thing called unit support. So you can get friends, you can get other tank destroyers, uh, uh, artillery guns, infantry units. They can come in and help you out, and you can call on them as you move around the map, and they will appear on the, on the battle map and fight with you against the enemies that you encounter. Um, and as we have seen testing it over the past couple of weeks, it really introduces a different kind of strategic choice for the player to make as to when you when you call these guys in, what types of um, what types of support that you think you should um, you should be bringing in and that sort of stuff. And it's different for every campaign. So each campaign has its own set of units. Usually the categories are more or less the same, um, but of course we can work on those and we can change those in the future. We might think of other types of support categories that we might introduce um, as well. Yeah. And now um, allied units can also show up randomly in battles, which is also pretty cool. Yeah, so, so it, it took a bit, a bit of work to get all that. I I'd, I'd had it planned out from the beginning, but um, it was a little work to get it sort of um, everything working properly with the AI. But now you might encounter a friend who was fighting next to you and happens to wander into your battle and will join in with you um, kind of randomly as well. So it kind of balances yeah. out the fact that the enemy AI could always have random reinforcements come in. Now the player has that too, which is always nice. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at our crew. What have we got? So this is the commander and this is the character that I'm playing. So as Henry White does in this short campaign, so will I do basically. If he dies, my campaign is over. If he gets sent to the field hospital, I miss that amount of the campaign and I come back and I have to find a new, um, basically recruit a new crew and start with a new tank. Um, so he's got a couple skills to start. He's got the standard skills for his position, experienced commander. Um, presumably crewmen like this in sort of the more demanding roles had already been trained in other aspects of running a tank. So if needed, he could jump into the gunner's seat and use the gun. He could jump into the driver's seat and drive the tank without any penalty. He doesn't have any special skills, but at least he knows the basics of how to do this. Um, whereas the opposite is not true. So. Um, if I go out of this and I go down to my driver, he's an experienced driver, but you put him, you tell him to, to man the gun and he's going to have enormous penalties because he doesn't really know how to do it. He hasn't been trained in how to use it. He knows how it works, of course, but he hasn't had that uh, the physical and mental training to actually use it effectively. But the commanders, you, we can expect that the commander's kind of been around. He knows things. He's been trained on these other positions. Um, and uh, depending on the campaign, your crewmen might have uh, what's called a campaign skill, a kind of an automatic skill that they're given, um, sort of to reflect some of the historical differences between different fronts and campaigns and units and nations um, during during the different campaigns as well. Um, all right, so uh, what do you think, Florian? Should I increase some stats? I have four advance points to spend. Mm. So what I usually do is I focus on survival skills. Um, I picked the one that improves the recon reports. We'll talk about that in a second, I guess, because that's really useful. Um, I also like to give my commander a gymnast from the start. Good idea. And things like quick reflexes to, just to lower the chance of him getting killed early on. Excellent. Because then the campaign is over. The, if you're cruel about this, the other 
crewmen are expendable, but the commander isn't. It's yeah, you're. I mean, it's unfortunately true, right? If you're playing this kind of permadeath, you are playing the commander. You can lose a crewman and replace him with somebody else, but if in this campaign, if Henry White dies, that's it. My game is over. So yeah, I think that's an excellent strategy from the beginning. Uh, with those first advance points, focus on survival. Um, so improved recon, which, as you said, we'll we'll talk about in one moment because that's another that's another new uh, that's another new um, sort of um, game mechanic uh, in the update. Um, quick reflexes, which is good because oftentimes the commander will have his hatch open to be able to spot more effectively yes. or direct so, fire. So what it quickly. does is um, so what it does is when you get hit by machine gun fire or explosive weapons or something and your crewman isn't buffed up it has a that crewman has a better chance to sort of take cover before he he gets hit by something and that's really useful sometimes when you get hit by i don't know um a, a high explosive shell or something um to decrease the chance of your crew getting killed by that yeah so just it reflects the fact that he will he will sort of duck down into cover before otherwise he might get injured so hopefully that will keep him alive too. Anything gymnast as well? Because if, sooner or later we're going to have to be bailing out of this firefly, as nice as, as it is. That's, yeah, hopefully later, yeah, not, hopefully. not sooner. We'll, yeah, we'll see. So I've got one left. Um, I've got. You think I should bump up perception maybe to give me a better spotting chance? It's only three at the yeah, moment. You could, you could do that. Uh, or is there another skill you think would be more... And it, I like enemy spotted to to decrease the ambush chance because yeah. ambushes can be quite nasty too. That's a good idea. And I think in some in some campaigns, um, you either have a you either automatically have a less chance of getting ambushed, or I think in the Winter War campaign, basically the Finns can't be ambushed because they know the terrain, they know the territory, and historically they were much more sort of aware of their surroundings um, compared you know compared to the other side. All right, so our, our gunner. Um, for the other crew, probably it's more important to build up their sort of destructive skills rather than their survivor survival skills. It would be nice to keep them around, but we don't know how long they're yeah. actually going to be, you know, with us. So, so with the gunner, I usually focus on either accuracy or rate of fire first. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the the firefly has a very accurate gun already, so we might want to get quick trigger, I guess. Yeah. To just fire more shots. I think the base rate of because fire I for the think... Firefly is pretty low, right? Yeah, but I think accuracy won't be a major problem here mm -hmm. because uh, the very long barrels, 17-pounder, is pretty good at hitting targets anyway. Mm -hmm. But the rate of fire can be an issue. So there's another rate of fire skill. Um, the critical hit isn't really an issue because we don't need critical hits with the 17-pounder uh, for the most part. It's just overkill. Yeah, we, we can just we can just destroy anything. That's that's not like the most heavily armored German tank. Pretty much. Like if, I don't know if, if we run into a Jagd Tiger or something like that, it could be difficult. But let's not tempt fate. Like, like as long as it's nothing more dangerous than a Tiger, uh, critical hits won't really be necessary. I, I don't think so. So there's yeah. two other rate of fire bonuses. So burst fire that's only for machine guns. Um, time on target only applies to stationary targets, but that could still be that could still be useful. Mm -hmm. I think since HE is limited now for the firefly, the machine gun will be quite important, actually. Oh, actually, yeah, we might true. want to go for for burst fire, uh, especially because we don't have a hull MG either. So this is um, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. So that's our gunner, uh, loader. Honestly, for the loader. It's really all about fast hands, right? Because that's their job, to reload the gun as quickly as possible. Although something like uh, gun maintenance or now now another new skill, uh, ammo scrounger, might be helpful as well. All of all three of those are quite useful. Um, I usually go for gun maintenance first because losing your main gun is just really problematic yeah. in some situations. Yeah, but, no, I think um, that's the way to go. With the new rare ammo, ammo types, um, ammo scrounger is also really, really good. For the Firefly, they get um, uh, APDS, or Armor Piercing Discarding Sabot, uh, or Sabot, I yeah. guess it would be the French. And but, also, 
but it, but you, you but you don't really need it because the base the base AP round is already extremely destructive. Yeah, and you would get more HE shells, right? Yeah, yeah, it affects both. So one of those, I think that's that's so maybe. Yeah, well, I gave him gun maintenance anyway. Um, if we survive, that's okay. If we survive the day, Just keep it in mind. Yeah, yeah, keep it in mind for the next level up. That's fine. Yeah, um, and for the driver. Um, quick shifter is good because oftentimes if you're moving on the map, yeah. you want to move in a hurry. You want to either increase or decrease distance. So, Yeah, move away from infantry, yeah. especially. All right, so that's our crew, four-man crew. Um, we can look at the journal, but we haven't done anything yet, so there's nothing there. We can look at the field hospital, but nobody's in there yet. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. Um, I think we're good to go. Nothing else to set up? Yeah. And start Let's our go. day. Pick up some ammo. All right, so this is the ammo load screen. Um, compared to the last major version, it's been reorganized a little bit, so it might look a little different. Um, but the functionality is essentially the same. You'll notice that there are new types of ammo that are available. Um, I think historically the Firefly only gets a um, armor piercing discarding, a discarding sabot in um, August or something, so we have to wait a couple weeks before these will start to become available. Um, so they weren't issued with them right from the start of the um, of the, the Normandy campaign. It was only a f sort of a few weeks in, historically, that they started to receive them. Um, we have unlimited AP, but we're limited as to the amount of HE that we can get. Um, it, we're limited at the start of the day, and I think every time we ask for resupply, there's going to be a limited amount, so we can't just fill up with HE, necessarily. Mm. Um, well, and it's again, pretty straightforward, I'd say. Um, just pick up as many HE as you can. Yeah, and fill up the rest with AP. That's so, all you can do. So there's this um, key here, X for default load, that will basically, first it will load up all of the rare ammo that's possible, then it will try to give you a balanced load of the other ammo types that you have. Um, but since we only have HE and AP to choose from, it basically fills it up with AP. Um, the only other question now is whether we might, might want to move some, some shells into or out of the ready rack. Um, but I think for fast firing, probably HP, uh, AP is more important than HE. Those are the ones we were, we're going to be wanting to fire at targets in quick succession. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that. Sometimes I just try to go for like three HE shells, three AP shells. And sometimes I go full AP. Kind of depends on the campaign. In this campaign, the German tanks are very dangerous. But so are the German anti-tank guns, so... Oh, that's true. Yeah, just do whatever you feel is appropriate. I think there's no wrong way to do this here. And we don't know what the rest of our squad is going to be like. I think it's it's probably going to be a mixture of Sherman 2s and Sherman 5s. I can't, I can't remember if the, if the Firefly can get other Fireflies in the same squad, but I'm thinking no, because usually, historically, it was, it was yeah, one to a troop, basically. I th I think it's always Sherman 2s and Sherman 5s for yeah. your squad main tanks. Yeah, because yeah. they didn't have a whole lot of them, so usually they were spread out in a small squadron of, you know, four or five tanks. Sherman 2s and, and 5s, and then only one of them at most would be a, a Firefly. Okay, uh, any extra ammo? Should we tempt fate? I guess we don't really I need wouldn't it. Do it. I wouldn't do it because we won't be using advancing fire anyway if, if we only have six HE shells. Yeah. So... And this is this should be enough AP for the entire day. Hopefully, we can we can destroy ninety German tanks with that. I think that's <laughs> if that's everyone right. if everyone hits though. If we miss any, we might need we yeah. Might let's say eighty to call okay, maybe eighty five or so. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit more. That's realistic. good enough. Um, one change I made, I think, just in the past couple of days, is that when you do advancing fire, the game will look at your ammo load, and if it sees you either don't have any HE or your HE is limited it'll do a special type of advancing fire that only uses the machine guns. And it doesn't use any HE rounds, but it's not as effective. So there's a chance that um, oh. if you encounter enemies, they won't, be, they won't start pinned. So I thought that was oh, good. Okay. I thought that was good because now yeah. there's, there's a fair number of tanks that have limited HE rounds. So you don't want to do advancing fire, fire off all of your HE shells and be left without them for the rest of the day. Um, but we can imagine that in advancing fire, they're basically shooting at everything that looks like it could be you know, an enemy or suspicious or whatever. And I would imagine they would be firing off their machine guns, you know, in bursts um, at the same time, whether or not they're using HE. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see how it goes. I can always change it later. It's still early access. That's, that's, that's my mantra. Early access 
it, it, uh, it could be changed, it could be shifted. You know, there's, a, there's always a scope for improving or, or tweaking things later on. All right, so here we are on the first day of our campaign, August 9th, 1944. Um, first thing in the morning, some just before 5 a.m. Here is the tank on the left. We have our various command menus. Um, we can see our main gun and our supply. Um, we do have a supply of smoke grenades, but the Firefly does not have a smoke mortar. Uh, we can take a look at our crew. Basically, the same. it's the same, um, more or less the same menu as on the other screen. This is for us to travel around and recon the map. And then finally, we can look at our squad. So we're joined by one Sherman 5 and one Sherman 2. Um, so a pretty small squad, but luckily we have a lot of unit support. We have 100% at the moment. So if we need friends, we can, we can call on them. So let's take a look at the map. We've got a hold um, objective, which would be a nice um, bit of victory points. Um, let's see, it's a battle mission, so it's not guaranteed that we'll be rolling across the map. We might lose territory, it might be pushed back a little bit. So we'll see, this might come into play later. Um, there's a capture objective and a recon objective as well. So I think always the first action that one should do is recon to try to figure out what sorts yep, of enemies. Every time. Yeah, what is around you? Because the more you know, the better. Right. So I mentioned before that in this new version of the game, there's, there's two major additions. There's a whole bunch of smaller changes and fixes, but two major additions. One is this unit support. The other is the way that enemies are kind of spawned into the map and how they exist on this, on this day map. So if you look here, this is very new. If I put my mouse over this zone here, you can see on the right, it tells me, oh, estimated enemies. Um, the recon units have gone out, the armored cars and stuff, they've gone out, they've taken a look around, and they think that there's an infantry squad and an assault gun in this zone. It's not necessarily accurate. It's probably pretty close, but we don't know 100% that that's exactly what we'll encounter if we go into this zone. Here, they think that there's one infantry squad, but it could be slightly wrong. Um, it's usually going to be not horribly wrong. So they might think that there's an infantry, infantry squad, but it ends up just being a small team, or they think it's an assault gun, but it's actually a tank destroyer. It's going to be sort of the same category of thing that you run into. Um, but you, do, you don't know for sure whether these, um, whether these recon reports um, are correct or not. But at least now, before you go into a zone, you have a hopefully a pretty good idea as to what you'll find. And based on what you expect to find, you can decide what sort of unit support um, that you want to call in. Yeah, and you can uh, modify your ready rack as well. So if yeah. I expect to be attacked by nothing but infantry, then I load up HE before I move into the zone. Unless I forget about it, which happens all the time, of course. Uh, but yeah, you can do that too. Yep. So between these two, basically, unless we want to move laterally into a friendly held zone, if we want to sort of start moving up the map, these are our two options. And between the two, even though this we're more likely to encounter resistance here, I think I would rather move this way to stay on the road and to make sort of make better time in terms of moving around. Um, what do you think? Or, is, or is, the, uh, is the prospect of encountering an assault gun good enough reason to, um, to avoid it? I always, I always try to go for the careful, more careful options. Mm. So I would go for the number two here. OK. Um, because that's just an infantry squad. We can take those guys out with a machine gun if they attack. Mm -hmm. We don't even need HE shells, probably. I mean, on the left, there might be a Stuck, I guess, sure. Sturmgeschütz. Um, which might be dangerous depending on the situation. Okay, so let's go into here. Um, we expect one infantry squad, squad, and with a strength of two, we're probably not. We probably won't trigger a battle anyway. We'll probably just go in, and uh, and yeah. we won't actually find anybody. Then we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try using advanced fire just to see if it actually works the way it, I intended. Hopefully, it'll say that we just use MGs and, we're, and we don't actually use up any HE shells at all. At least, at least then we'll know. And I won't call in any support because I don't think it's gonna. There's gonna be much resistance. No, no, no. That that would be a waste of yeah. resources. Yeah. All right. So let's see what happens. Yeah. So using machine guns. Oh, all right. Not not a great start to the day, but ho hopefully this isn't hopefully this isn't the shape of uh, of our luck for the rest of the day. All right. So we went in. We did use advancing fire. It didn't pin whoever this is, because um, it would have told us that your advancing fire had pinned them down. Uh, this is a really bad spot for us to be in, because it, with infantry at this close range, we're really vulnerable yes. to them. 
Um, so I'm going to try to get my driver to get some distance. Yeah, direct movement and drive and just drive away from them. Because they might use a Panzerfaust, they might use demolition charges or anything, and we don't want that. Um, I think what I will do, I'll put my gunner on the on the coax MG, um, just yes. in, just in case it does make sense to fire at them. Um, but for those of you who haven't played before, um, this is the first sort of uh, uh, each of the battles runs in phases, um, like many other war games. It, should, it would be familiar to you in RPGs and things. And the first thing you need to do in every turn is issue orders, commands to your various crew. So you pick your crewmen, and um, you can scroll left and right different types of orders and commands, and up here in the left it'll give you a description as to what will happen um, based on this. And once you've given your crewman a command, he's stuck with that command for, for the rest of the turn. So, um, yes. The tricky question now is, do you want to open up your hatches, or do you want to leave <laughs> them shut? Uh, because you can spot them if, 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 they, if your crew is CE, and you'll have a better chance to move forward. Right. But they might hit your crew with grenades or something like that. So it's, so it's one of the tricky questions, and I'm never quite sure about it. I think what I'll do is I'll get the loader to pop his hatch open. Because if he does, he has a chance to spot them. And yes. if I lose my loader, um, I can always find another one. <laughs> yeah, whereas, that's the whereas I can't replace myself. <laughs> okay. We're not going to get a medal with the, with the, with these you know with this kind of attitude. All right, so let's go let's go through the spotting phase. Uh, remember, we do have two friends here, so stacked uh, kind of you know virtually on top of each other in the same hex. We have our Sherman two and our Sherman five that are are our squad mates. Um, they also get a chance to spot as well. So even if all of our crew couldn't see the unknown enemy unit, um, there's a chance that our, our squad mates might spot it as well. All right, so we've spotted it. It's just a, a regular old Rifleman Squad. But in this new updated version, Rifleman Squad could have dangerous things in their pockets. Things like Molotovs, things like demolition charges. Um, in the older versions, they used to use grenades, which didn't really make sense. I mean, uh, it's kind of a high explosive grenade on a tank isn't going to do much. Um, it's going to sort of pepper it with shrapnel, but it's not, it's not really going to pose a threat to it. Um, that was just kind of a placeholder weapon. Now they have demolition charges, these kind of high explosive charges that you place right on the side of the tank, um, you know, by somebody extremely heroic, I suppose. And uh, they are designed to do an enormous amount of damage to whatever they're next to. Or Molotovs, which don't explode, but they will spread burning liquid across the outside of the tank. It seeps in through the hatches, it seeps into the, 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 the air vents, and it can cause a, a, a great deal of damage as well. So even though they're just infantry and they're just armed with rifles, they might have very dangerous things hidden on their person that they can use at this close range. I think you can see their weapons when you right-click on them, which might not be 100% intended, but you can try it. Okay, it shouldn't be. If it's, a, if it's one of these um, new close combat weapons, it shouldn't show up anywhere until they actually use it. But if it is, I'll, I, I'll have to say. That happened to me earlier today. I right-clicked on a, I think, Canadian infantry squad, and it said rifles, grenades, and molotovs. Oh, okay. So that actually showed me that they also had molotov cocktails. Okay. These these guys only seem to have grenades, or, or maybe it's not showing us. So we should be careful either way. The, my intent, we'll, well, my intent was that you won't know in, that they have them until they use them, because it's not the kind of thing where they're kind of holding it up and you can see. Um, it's much yeah. much well, easier I, to hide. I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I yeah. I'm not. I'm not taking any chances. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. Um, so, oh, no. <laughs> so moving forward isn't going to help because basically they will shift down here and they'll still be one hex away. Um, I can pivot and move away from them, even though I'm exposing my rear armor. Once I'm one hex away, um, they're no threat to me. They have to move in close to actually use their weapons. But my forward move chance is a little less than 60%. So I could try a forward move, but if I don't... Well, honestly, with the with the close combat attacks, I don't think it matters a whole lot whether it hits the rear no, it doesn't matter at or all. the side. It's it's going to be really devastating no matter what. So uh, I'm going to do something very non-heroic. I'm going to turn around and run away from this infantry squad that's just popped up. So let's see how it goes. Yes, excellent. Okay, so we put some distance between them and us. And I suppose 
Just turn the machine gun around, yeah. There are odds. This is a small odd odds of uh, affecting it. So yeah, we can uh, Doesn't matter, just rotate the turret yeah, around. We got, shooting. got lots of bullets, yeah. right? No effect. Okay. Well, it was worth a try anyway. Um, that's all the shooting I have, so I'll end that. Um, as soon as I end this phase, there's probably going to be a couple things that are going to happen. My squad mates will get a chance to attack. Um, they may fire HE shells because as Sherman 2s and um, 5s, they have a lot more. They're more designed for um, for kind of uh, uh, infantry suppression. Um, and then after that, we'll see what the uh, what the enemy squad does. We're spotted. Hello. And nobody attacked. So my, my um, squad, squad mates didn't ta attack and the riflemen didn't move and they didn't try to fire the rifles or anything. Okay. No, just button everybody up. Keep, keep our shooting. distance. Direct fire, machine gun. I guess I don't even as need to. Uh, don't... I don't even need to turn around, right? I just keep the keep no, no. the turret. As long as they on. don't move, we don't have to do anything but shoot. So you see now um, that you now we've stopped and we're not moving, and we have the commander uh, directing fire, and we're firing at a target that we fired at last turn. Our chances of actually affecting them have gone up a fair amount. Excellent, and we maintain rate of fire. Keep going. All right, so I think we got eight firepower on them. Yeah. That's a good start. We'll see what our squad mates do. Nothing. So we put eight firepower on them, and they were reduced. So they weren't destroyed, they weren't routed, but in the future they'll be much less effective because essentially, you know, uh, sort of a third to a half of them have been injured, incapacitated, or killed as a result of the attack. So now I think if you click on them, yeah, so it shows that they're reduced um, in all aspects of, of combat. They're much less effective now. And in the future, if you put more firepower on them, you're more likely to destroy them because there's fewer of them there. It's much more likely they'll just route and say, that's it, I give up, and just, you know, just run away. Ce essentially cease to be an effective unit, an effective group of fighting, fighting guns. All right, bit of an overkill, but thanks. Yeah. Works for me. Oh, they're just pinned. <laughs> what are they doing? They're even in open ground. These guys are really tough. They must be veterans or something that have been posted to the to the Western Front. All right, let's keep trying. And now they get they're getting hit with seventy five minutes. Wow, oh, oh, pin. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm guessing the stream is lagging a little bit behind my game because yeah a little bit yeah yeah that's okay all right so I'll pause for a moment so I laid down some more firepower on them let's see what happens another shell <laughs> okay all right good All right, so that was that was fairly that was a lot more effective, and there we go. Um, the other Shermans have unlimited HE, right? No, so this was another change, um, and I'm just I'm keeping an eye on the stream in another window just so I know what you and everybody else can see, because um, it is lagging it's lagging behind my live game by about maybe fi uh, ten or fifteen seconds, but. Um, so, uh, right now, all AI units in the game have limited ammo. So the game tracks their ammo. Um, it's an open question right now what the AI units will do when they run out of ammo. I'm not sure if they'll be able to handle it properly. Um, hopefully, if I've coded it properly, they'll basically just switch to other weapons. They'll know what to do. And um, when you call in supply, resupply, your um, squad mates get resupplied as well. Ah, okay. So, so will they always... Like um, go for half HE, half AP, or they they'll essentially get what um, the player gets if you hit X on the ammo load menu, the default load. Ah, okay. And yeah. I can I can tweak that in the future so it's as effective as possible. But um, I figured it's easier to code it once and then have it work for everybody. Um, but so far it seems okay. to be working okay. 
Well, we'll see. If, if enemies start doing weird things, like they run out of ammo and then just don't do anything, I'll need to, um, you know, I'll need to code in something extra. Maybe then they try to withdraw because they're out of ammo. They can't effectively fight anymore. Um, but we'll see what happens. And, uh... All right, so let's continue traveling. Do some recon. And we haven't even used up any any ammo yet. Still have a full ready rack. All right, so two zones next door to us. Um, one of them has strength seven, one of them has strength three. In the strength seven, there's a small team. Oh, an APC, so that's an armored personnel carrier and an assault gun. And in the other zone um, that has a strength three, there's just an assault gun. So I'm thinking take on the, the solitary assault gun, maybe with some, some uh, support. Yeah, yeah. Um... We have plenty of unit support. We could just call in some anti-armor support, I guess. Yeah, I think One so. One airstrike. Airstrikes are pretty good against tanks. It, it's, my impression is that airstrikes are very good against like large targets, mm -hmm. like a tank, while artillery is really good against infantry and guns. No, that's exactly right, because the air attacks have to be able to spot the target. Um, and um, bigger, larger targets, and even like larger targets within a class. So, like a heavy tank is an easier thing to spot on the battlefield than a, than a uh, than a light tank. So, an assault gun, depending but, uh, on its class, might be it might be like a little martyr or something. So, it might be quite small. But I would just call it either an airstrike or unit support rather than both. It's yeah. just a single Stuck, probably. You say I'm that. Probably going to. I'm probably going to regret saying this, but we can handle this. <laughs> Let's I hope, see. I hope. All right. Well, I know who to blame if it doesn't work out anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, in this case, in this case, because you know it's an assault gun, there's no point in doing advancing fire because assault guns and other armored vehicles can't be pinned. Exactly. If, if there's if there's you know machine gun fire peppering off of their armor, they don't care. They're safe and sound. So there's no point spending. Um, is it extra time? No, it's not extra time. It would just be extra HE shells or whatever, because it's not going to affect yeah. them. So, Oops. it's a good way to save HE and other yes. tanks. Yeah. So luckily, uh, it, it, wor it works it well with frequently. this. Yeah, with this new kind of uh, this new mechanic of some some tanks. If historically they didn't use HE very much, um, of them actually having uh, limited limit more limited amounts during the day. So this is one of the new menus. This is where you get to pick who your friends might be as you go in um, to this battle. So you can pick, uh, basically you pick the category and then the actual units that appear are randomly generated. So you can say anti-armor, um, anti-infantry, recon. So recon is usually like things like armored cars um, or artillery. And the artillery units are usually sort of the lighter guns, the more transportable guns, not the really big ones that require huge amounts of, of crew. It's the ones that can more easily be kind of transported from place to place. Partially because when we were testing it, having heavy artillery at beck and call was a little bit overpowered, because you could just yeah. you could bring in these enormous guns and they would you know just basically destroy everything else on the map. Um, but I think historically and sort of from an imaginary an imagined point of view, it makes more sense to say if you have guns at hand that can be brought in with you as you're driving into a place, they're going to have to be towed or they're going to have to be lighter. It's going to be like you know an 18 pounder or 25 pounder in the case, um, or for the uh, the Canadians and the British, um, a self propelled gun like an like a sextant right which has tracks which can move with you yep. as you move into a new location yep. um, but because we know it's likely an assault gun i'll bring in anti-armor so it could be yep. a piet team could be a 17 pounder which is a very good um anti-tank gun um it could be the three inch um m10 which is uh, a tank destroyer uh, sort of like a very light tank with a very powerful gun on it um, or an achilles which is um I guess the same thing, but uh, it has a 17-pounder on it, right? So an yep, Achilles same is same like, as the Firefly. Yeah, so it's like a lighter version of us. Yeah. Um, it, it has very, very light armor. It was designed to move, basically move around the battlefield as quickly as possible. It wasn't meant to get into these kind of these tank duels. Just get in, fire, and then move away and get into cover. Um, that's why it has very, very light, light armor and an open top as well. So I'll call in anti-armor. resistance excellent so we have an m10 with us tank okay. destroyer 
Um, yeah, it's got. It also has a 70, uh, 76 millimeter gun. Uh, sorry, I forgot. I forgot about the lag. You get. You get. A, you get a, a sort of a preview of what's happening or what's going to happen. It's, what this reminds me of is. It's a bit like I'm inside the tank. I'm like the driver or the loader, <laughs> and I always have to wait for the commander to tell me what's going on. But it's you're, you're it's the last right. the last one to learn anything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, an M10 t uh, British British M10 uh, tank destroyer with us. It has a 76 millimeter gun. Not quite as good as ours, but still, you know, still very capable. So yeah. that's good. And there's only one enemy unit. It's at long range, which is good. Because with the Firefly, we work best at long ranges. But the key now is, of course, I, to, to spot it. What I usually do in situations like this is I try to go hold down immediately. So I would drive and pivot towards that enemy unit and then try to go hold down because you're in a building spot. Yeah. That's not a bad spot to try and go hold down. Once you hold down, it's, you know, it's like life insurance. Um, it just gives you more protection. Your hole is very unlikely to hit, uh, to be hit, and it's just a much better way to start a fight. So that's what I would do here. Yeah, no, that's a good point. The uh, pull down basically means that there's something solid between you and the enemy that is at the height of your tank's hull. So it could be a very large stone fence, it could be a hill, it could be a stone building, whatever it is. Uh, if there's incoming fire, it's more likely to be absorbed and to be stopped before it hits you. So as Florian said, it's kind of like life insurance. If, if there's a, a, an AP shell coming in at you, there's a, and if it hits your hull, it'll hit that first and save you. Um, whereas otherwise, it would just come right through. And the Firefly, for as, as good as its gun is, is still just a Sherman. So it has, for late war, relatively light, uh, relatively light armor. Right, so let's... Um... Direct movement for the for the commander, so we have a better yeah, chance yeah, to fall down. That, that, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So pivot once and then attempt to hold down. All right, so we tried, but unfortunately we weren't able to, as you'll see in a moment. Um, the one downside to attempting hold down is that you count as moving, because of course you have to move around looking for a spot where you're where you're protected. Uh, you count as moving, so. You know, firing at things and hitting things is going to be a little bit more difficult for this tank. So, do you think yeah, it's with... do you think it's worth it? We could fire off an HE shell at it, which would um, increase the chance. Even if we miss, it would increase the chance of spotting it in the next turn. I wouldn't do it because that would probably. Um, I think the way it works is it makes enemy units more likely to shoot back. Now, assuming this is a Stug. And it might be aiming at us or in our general direction. I wouldn't want to give away our position just yet. Yeah. Let's just wait, wait, and wait for other other units to spot it first, and then we can still think about it. Yeah, it's a good idea because at the moment we are unspotted to the enemy, who whoever they are. So they still need to spot us first before they can get an effective shot on us. So for the moment, let's just hang tight. Uh, okay, so you'll see in a moment what it is. <laughs> it's not good news. Your your commander tells is telling you it's not it's not good news. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, a storm panzer. Yeah, that's a yeah. Boom bear. <laughs> what is uh, what is that? What's the literal meaning? Is that is it like a bear? Uh, like like I, I don't know. Like a grizzly bear or something? What's, what sound does a what sound does a bear make in English? To, to brum? Can you say that? I would say a roar. I would say a bear roars like a, like it's, a lion. It's like a it's like a um, a roar a, bear. It's a more quiet form of a roar. Okay. Roaring bear. Yeah. Oh, like a growling. And that thing has a growling bear. Yeah, that thing has a 150 millimeter yep. artillery gun, and if that hits us, uh, goodbye. It's not gonna be great. Oh, and it has, well, it has 14, um, 14 armor on the upper structure. It doesn't have a turret, so it, uh, it has to pivot to fire if it's not facing the right direction. Um, uh, its hull armor is 11 on the front. For us, for in a Firefly, both of those should be okay. We can penetrate that. Yeah, we, we can shoot through that. That's all right. So at the moment, he is facing kind of down and left, so um, if... 
for him to fire at us, he's going to need to pivot, which means he has a less uh, lower chance of, of hitting us, which is good. Um, he's in the forest, which means he's going to be harder for us to hit. Um, I think... Sorry, so one of our options would be basically to try to go around for a side armor shot, but with a firefly, it doesn't really matter. We don't, no, we don't need no. to rely on a side armor to penetrate the armor. Um, the, only, the only thing we should think about is, do we want to try and go hold down again, or do we want to shoot straight away? And since it's not aiming at us, I would say let's shoot immediately. Oh, I thought you would say the opposite. I, I thought you would say, well, here we, we have we have probably a turn when we're safe, so let's let's use that turn to try to get hull down and then fire. But you think now, start you, firing you do now. That too. Like, it's one of these questions that have no right, no wrong answer, you know. It's uh, until you realize it was maybe wrong. I'm, because you maybe were... I'm just impatient, uh, being impatient right now, I just want to kill this thing. But yeah, you could try to go hold down again. Sure. You can do it. I think I think I will because I'm really worried that he's basically going to pivot fire, and even though it's a short-barreled gun at long distance, like you said, it's so enormous. All it has oh, to yeah. do is hit, oh, yeah. hit us. All right, even so if it's just an HE shell, it will hurt. It yeah. will hurt a lot. So I'm going to leave my commander exposed because that will increase the effect of his direct, direct movement command. Um, the gunner he can, he can operate the gun, but I don't plan on, sh on firing. Well, I'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll see what the modifiers are like. But in any case, the plan is to go hold down. Uh, I have a 22% chance. That's not great. No, you'll see in a moment. It was not successful. So I think that's the last time we'll yeah. try. I think we just have to start firing. And yeah, I'm checking, I'm checking the shot. And because I moved trying to get hull down, it's it's just not going to be possible. It's a minus six. Yeah, that's not something. Down. That's not a good idea. Just either try to go hold down or shoot. Yeah, it's it's you, not a move and fire kind of kind of tank. Right? Sometimes you can fire a, a machine gun while trying to go hold down. That is okay. Hey, okay, that can work. But the main gun, uh, firing the main gun while moving is usually yeah. not going to work. Yeah. All right. So let's see what happens. Let's see if my chums. Can, um, or the uh, or maybe the M10 will get a good shot because it's at actually uh, slightly closer. So who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. All right, that's not going to do much. I'm just going to bounce off. That might do something. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Who got who got the kill? Who the M10. The kill? Yeah. The, as you'll see in a moment, the M10. Yeah. The M10 does it. Nice. So okay, cool. well, we're, well worth calling him in. We probably could have done it, but I wasn't looking forward to um, those. Uh, what was it, 120 millimeter shells coming in, being delivered in our in our general direction? All right. And the cool thing is, no matter who destroys the target, you get credit for it in this game. It's a team effort. Commander. Yeah, we're all in this together. Yeah. All right. So I'm doing some recon. Um, so there's one zone with a strength of two. It has an armored car and a support weapon team. And one zone with a strength of five. It has a support weapon team and an armored car. So essentially, essentially the same. Uh, yeah, just go for the for the zone with lower resistance. And you might get be able to get through that without a fight. Yeah. Advancing fire. Yeah. No, with machine guns. Yeah. 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 Which seems to be which seems to be working. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So you see in a moment we had a very good result. So we'll just do some recon. Yeah. And I can go for the objective now. Yeah, you'll see in a moment. It's just a recon objective, so it's very easy to get once you're within one one yeah, yeah. hex of it. Um, and then I've done some recon on, on the next zones. We could go to the left and try and capture this other objective as well. But oh, there's there's a lot of resistance in the way. Let's let's check that out first. Yeah. So there's a strength six zone, yeah. and it has an infantry squad, oh, yeah. two armored cars, oh, and yeah. an assault gun. It would be it would the be a bit of a cars, slog. The armored cars are not the problem, but the assault gun might be 
like just having all of this at the same time that could be tricky i wouldn't do it i would go for a something that's not as dangerous as this yeah i'd suggest that we move up might as well move into this too into this marsh area yeah follow the road yeah uh, support weapon team in a truck so advancing fire i think i might call in do you think i should call in some unit support on this anti-infantry because a truck could have a whole infantry squad inside of it yeah the funny thing with these low numbers is i always when i decide that it's not going to be a fight i don't need support then i always get attacked <laughs> and when i think oh i need the support now then it's always a there was no resistance event so yeah you have to trust I'll me leave, that the I, game I let you decide the, the game doesn't yeah. cheat it doesn't look at oh you called in support yeah. i'm not going to give you a fight or whatever it is it, it plays it straight the code the code yeah, is, but sometimes it's just yeah it, it feels that way right on my part yeah. it's, it's just human nature to to want to see a pattern or a meaning behind our our mistakes I would I would just use advancing fire, but that's just me. If you want some support, go for it. We have plenty of support now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you'll see in a moment we captured the zone with no resistance. Um, there was some action elsewhere on the front, but I don't think it'll have an impact on us right away. Um, it looks like it's there's a possibility we might get cut off from resupply, but at the moment we're we still have lots of ammo, so that's not an issue. And um, the way it works yeah. right now is if we move into a new map zone, essentially, as long as we have a connection to the bottom of map of that map area, we can get resupply, um, which maybe isn't completely realistic, but I haven't figured out you know a better way to do it yet. Works gameplay wise. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Don't don't seem to be broke, so I try to fix it. Right? Yeah, sometimes sometimes it makes uh, for an interesting choice do i want to fall back and retake the zones to establish a supply line again or maybe i can just break through and solve the problem like that you know yeah break through and then, cool, and then and then you don't have to worry about the supply line um so we've got yeah we've got two zones in front of us a three and a four an assault gun yeah i can see it and an assault gun and two support weapon teams support weapon teams could be really nasty you know uh Panzer Shreks or something, so I'm going to go into the three. Uh, it's an, I'm going to bring in unit support as well because that worked well. Yeah, so well yeah. The last time. Good idea. Uh, Good anti armor. Idea. Yeah. All right, so it's going to be a battle, and as you'll see in a moment, we have our old friend, maybe the same M10 that helped us out last time, is now is now joining us in this new battle. Who knows? It's Let's not see actually... if it's another, another broom bear. <laughs> the, the, the brother of the one that we destroyed. You know, it's it's back for revenge. Um, all right, so there's some. So kind we're of... in a brush. Yeah, we're in a brush tile now. Yeah. brush is okay for going all down. It's not great, but it's reasonably good to to find some cover. So same... we might want to reposition and go for some buildings instead because they they. Um, provide better cover than brush. Yeah, so the, it um, this little console down here on the bottom left that I haven't quite figured out how to format it or what to do with it, but I think it's important to show the information that it does show. It tells you that in general you're in a kind of a villages area. So this the fact that this was a villages zone has an impact on the particular territory that your units encounter. So yeah, so there's some stone buildings that our, our friend is in. There's some fields that our other friend is in. You can imagine we're in a kind of a villagey area, so there's a good chance that we could find ourselves some wooden buildings or stone buildings to uh, to move into. So similar strategy to last time: try to get into a good position, keep our distance. Um, I guess he doesn't have to operate the gun. He's not going to be doing anything. Uh, get the loader to spot because he's expendable. Oh, all right. So now at least we know what we're dealing with. So see in a moment we've spotted the enemy. It's not a broom bear. I guess growl growl bear would be the literal translation, I think. If it's yeah, like, I guess. If it's not a roar, if it's more sort of like a low Yeah, so that's the Stug, alright. It's one of the most common German late war vehicles here. So we're living the Stug life. Yeah. Um, it's uh got minimal armor compared to our gun. That's gonna be no problem at all. 
Um, but the, the yeah. long-barreled 75 um, could be an issue. So we could reposition now and try to find some buildings, which is pretty easy in this zone. Yeah. Or we could try to go hold down right here. What's, what's the chance with Bard? Hold down is 12% at the moment. Yeah, I would find some buildings instead. Yeah, like you said, brush is, it's okay, it's not impossible, but at the same time, we could probably do better. So let's do a reposition action. Trying to remember, I can't remember if this is new in this version or if it was part of the last version where you can, you have a choice as to what kind of terrain. I think it was added in the last major update. Um, the, yeah, that was, I think, version six or, or even five or so. Yeah. It's been here for, for a long time. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think there's a difference between wooden buildings and stone buildings for tank cover wise. Probably. Uh, I would just go for what, whichever is more likely to happen. So wooden buildings. 90%. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right. So as you see in a moment, we were successful. All right, good. So just let the stream catch up. I don't know what it is about Steam, but it, it always seems to be quite laggy like this. Yeah, and the M10, I don't know where he's going, but he decided he wanted to put a, little, <laughs> put a little bit more distance between himself and the Stug, I guess. All right. Ah, oh, so that's interesting. So one thing that happened is we drove around, we found some wooden buildings, we took up a good position among them, but as a result, we don't have a direct line of sight on the Stug now. So we can't spot them and we can't, actually, we can't attack them either. So what I usually do in a situation like this is I try not to panic and I just stay where I am and try to go hold down because Let what him usually move to happens less, right? is at, at some point the enemy will... will start moving and then yeah. you will usually get a line of sight anyway. Yeah. That's better than like trying to change your position again and again and again and eventually perhaps end up in a bad spot. And our squad mate tanks might destroy this thing next turn anyway. Or the brave M10. The bravely retreating M10 there. <laughs> the Sir Robin, Sir Robin M10. Okay, so you, uh, you'll see in a moment as the stream catches up. We, we got a bad result on the hull down, but there's a good result coming up, which you'll see in a moment. Yeah, nice shot. So that's when it, it helps to have friends to help you out. All right. Have we actually have we destroyed anything yet with the with the firefly, or has it all been no? No, it's all I been our, we our haven't even fight, We haven't <laughs> fired a shot yet. <laughs> well, the day's still young. It's not even noon yet. There's, there's still lots of time for that. Uh, we killed some infantry. Yes. That's it. Yeah, we used the, the coax MG. So. Okay. So what does that last enemy zone there look like? Uh, armored car, truck, anti-tank gun. And of those, it's really the anti-tank gun that could be difficult. Otherwise, we could move into an allied zone and um, just shift the whole map up and see what the next map area has for us. Yeah, I would I would just um, drive past them. Just stay in friendly territory. We don't yeah. have to engage everything. Especially because as a Firefly, anti-tank guns are not what we're really designed to take on. Yeah, it's like the worst thing that can happen to us on a Firefly. Okay, good. That worked. I was a little, I was a little worried because I haven't, I haven't tested the map shift all that much. It seems to be working out okay. Um, we're in a friendly zone. That same zone that we just just passed is is still next to us, and the lake is still there as well. Okay, so everything looks good. A marsh and a forest. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be and no roads either. So slow going. Yeah, for, for marshes. Marshes are not a good zone to move into because the marsh spots or the marsh um, terrain makes your movement very slow. Yeah. And if there's a nearby infantry, that can really, really uh, be a problem. Oh, oh, anti-aircraft gun. That could be a flak 88. It's probably a flak flak 88 actually. Oh, probably because okay. I I don't think I've added a whole lot of German anti-aircraft guns to late war yet. So. Chances yeah, yeah, are, yeah. Un yeah. Unfortunately, at the for the time being, um, that, yeah, there's a really good chance that, that that's what it is. 
but there's two medium tanks. I'd say we go into here because you know we're good against tanks. It's kind of what we're made for. Yes, maybe bring some friends or call in the airstrike. Airstrike might be worth it this time. Would you say both? Is it worth the extra ten minutes? We haven't even used air support yet. Yeah, you can do it. Sure. Might not even run into typhoons. Yeah, let's give it a try. And um, again, we'll use anti-armor support and see what we get. And I get a little preview before it comes in. All right. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you'll see in a moment what happens. Um, kind of good news and not so great news, basically. No bad news yet. Yeah, even though we had 80% air support, we we got unlucky with the roll, and they weren't able actually actually to send planes to um, to support us. But we do we do have a friend. We've got a two person Piet team behind us, the mm -hmm. uh, infamous spring loaded anti tank weapon. Yeah, which now they... there's one thing we could do here. Um, this is it's not really realistic, but it works. It's just how the map works right now. We could drive away from the enemy and that will shift the PIAT team closer to the yeah. to the targets let them let them they deal with it they will probably get killed within seconds <laughs> but um, that's what they're here for considering right? at least <laughs> um, and we're in marshes too well i guess at the moment um, we're in open ground so we, we we actually have a pretty good chance of moving um, let's see. yeah well we're going to do some kind of movement action probably right but let's get the loader perhaps um, drive into terrain, perhaps, and try to find some good terrain here while driving away from them. Yeah, there might be... Oh, hang on. We, we, we are pulled down already. You see that? Yeah. So somehow we found okay. like a rock or yeah. something, or a, a very small hill that was just big enough to protect our hull. So actually, maybe we should then just I stay put. Like, we should just pivot towards them and stay here, because we uncover. This is a pretty good spot, actually. Fight. So no use... Um... Directing movement, right? Because a pivot is always automatic. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I guess actually with pivoting, the the penalty to hit is not as bad. It it might actually work. So at least I'll leave I'll leave the um the option open of firing, and get the commander to spot. Okay. We'll see how that goes. Answer four H. Okay. So we we spotted mm -hmm. one of the two. As you'll see in a yeah, moment. That's a good target. It's got basically the same gun as the uh, Sherman 2 and Sherman 5, and more or less the same armor. Actually, its turret armor is a little lower. Uh, the Germans use long barreled 75mm guns, though, and they are more effective. Oh, is the. More um... accurate and more effective. Yeah. Oh, you're it's right. It's about yeah. as strong as a 3 inch gun, right. like one of these advanced. 76 millimeter Sherman guns, not the Firefly one, but uh, the American guns. So the regular so yeah, Sherman that... two and five, it's just a normal, a normal length 75. It's not a long barrel. Uh, yeah. If we get hit by that, it's Still most likely good. going to be uh, a bailout. Then, yeah. yeah. So we'll at least let's, we'll, let's get... we'll at least no, let's get pivot. ready to fire. Yeah. Yeah. At least pivot, pivot so towards that... them. Target, hold on, hold on. I pick the right target here. Yeah, all right, so that's not, you'll see in a moment, it's not too bad of a shot. Um, I'm using the ready rack. Um, I have a small, you know, a fairly substantial penalty to pivot, but not as bad as if we moved. Um, I fixed it in a sec. I was targeting the one that we didn't see yet. Yeah, there we go. Um, the, yeah. the target gets a little bit of cover from sort of the, the plants and things that are in the marsh. But we have the very long gun, so that's extremely good at long range. Um, our crewmen are a little fatigued. I don't know why they haven't done anything yet. They've just been <laughs> driving around. They've had it easy. Oh well, uh, we should be be sure to give them maybe a rest in the next um, in the next turn. Um, but it's still not too bad. I think I I think it's well worth a well worth an attempt for thirty. Yeah, I would fire. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'll see in a moment. Good news. And I think, yeah, with that armor, I don't just let you catch up. They, they don't have a chance. That's, no. that's a kill. Yeah. So it's going to be a hit, and um, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let it resolve at the end of the phase. Automatic, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so as I said, yeah, it didn't stand a chance, basically, against even just the regular AP round. Um, so we spot the next uh, tank. It's exactly the same kind. Um, correct fire. We're still yeah. hull down, so really no reason to move. Yeah, just shoot them. Yeah. Just shoot them. We're in the perfect spot to fight here. Yeah, basically no good tactical reason to move around unless we wanted to do the trick of trying to get the Tiet team closer, but they don't they don't seem to be in too much of a rush or a hurry to go anywhere. They, they can just they can just relax, we've got this. <laughs> unless we get hit in the turret now and it's over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Let's we'll see. See what happens in the next phase. Uh oh! All right, I'm gonna let the stream catch up. So our our um, <laughs> our, our our squad mates fired, uh, and uh, I think they both missed. You don't get as much information when it's the AI, AI doing the attacks, um, but I suspect uh, that they, that they both missed. Right? <laughs> Even if they hit, it just okay, it basically just bounced off. But yeah, yeah I hope he goes for the hole. Yeah, as you see, hole. as you see now, <laughs> yeah, we've we've got a 75 millimeter AP shell coming in at us. So let's see how that goes. Oh! I won't spoil the surprise. <laughs> I think you can guess that it. it's good news, though. All right, we got lucky. Uh, they had the worst shots on the planet. All right. <laughs> well, now that, they're, now that they've gotten the target on us... Um... Yeah, next time it will be a 99.5% chance. We, yeah. we should kill them first. <laughs> let's let's try our best to do that. So we've got still got one uh, shell left in the ready rack. We might actually get rate of fire. Um, yeah, but just for the viewers here, even if that thing had hit us, there would have been a very good chance of it just hitting our hold down cover. And more likely than not, we would have survived this. But there was also a small chance of getting hit in the turret. That would have been probably tank loss. Yeah, I don't know what the chances of saving. Uh, it's hitting the front, so it's armor eight, but um, yeah, it would have been very, very s slim chance of surviving a hit like that. Um, but yeah, as you said, that's why we try to get hull down, so we have that protection. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the good news up ahead. We hit it, and again, it was an automatic, automatic penetration. Yeah, 89% yeah. chance. All right, so let's keep going. I can pick up that easily. Yeah, that's some good experience for our crew here. Two tank kills. Yeah, we should have at least a few advances um, at the end of the day, assuming we survive the end of the day, all the crew survive. So we're back on the, on the campaign day, day map. What have we got next to us? The anti-tank gun and an APC. Um, it's the same strength level in both zones. The APC probably hunt, is better for us. Yes, hunt down that. It's probably a half track. Yeah, and if, if we take it out before it can unload its um, unload its passengers, then that's the An best. Easy target. The anti tank gun is what we don't want to face. In yeah, the yeah, definitely want to avoid that. Um, I'm going to call in some air support just because we have so much of it. Um, it might be nice just to see if we can take it out before we even have to deal with it. I think a lot of battles today. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. So you see in a moment the air support was not effective. They couldn't spot anybody. Maybe it's a very small APC. 
like a little uh, KFZ one or something. Difficult to spot from here. Um, but they so because there's always a, there's always a small chance that your recon is wrong. I I always try to be cautious, even if it's probably just an APC, and I try to go hold down anyway. I just I always assume the worst case scenario that it's some kind of heavy tank or right. tank destroyer or whatever, right. and I try to find cover because there's no reason not to try. Makes sense. Um. See, we don't have a very good hold, cha uh, hold down chance where we are. I'm just looking yeah, at, and, and for, in terms of uh, reposition, there's there's not. I mean, we can try a reposition, but the chances are not great. Yeah, woods or something, I guess. Because yeah, it's worth a try. It's better than where we are anyway. No, so we ended up we ended up in in open ground, um, no hold down at all. The, um, the enemy is still unspotted, so we don't know what it is. Could fire an HG shell at it, but we don't really know what the effect will be. And I think, yeah, almost because we moved, there's almost no chance to hit anyway. So yeah, like, nothing else. HG shells nothing else. Yeah, nothing else we can do in this turn. Oh, okay, yeah. So you're right. The 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 recon was not completely accurate. But it's it's okay. It's it's something that we can deal with. Um, it's an armored car, uh, PSW two three one. So it has a tiny main gun and almost no armor. Yeah. Twenty millimeter gun. It's practically harmless for our tank. Oh shoot! I hit the I hit the advanced phase key rather than the fire key. You'd think after this long, I would know. I would button up the commander just in case there's a sniper somewhere around. Good idea. Yeah, no sense. No sense keeping him open, right? And we'll we'll have have enough um, to fire bonuses that it, it won't really matter whether he's um, exposed or not. You'll see in a moment we hit the armored car, and again, even less of a chance to save than the uh, than the Panzer IV. Yeah. All right. So we're back on the um, on the campaign day map. I'm just I'm taking a look at the crew, and most of them um, have a good number of points of fatigue. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to call for a resupply, because that, if I remember correctly, I, I made this game, you would think I remember. I think if you call for resupply, your crewmen get rested as well. Because I think so. I never I never do it. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know why. It's it's just my play style, I guess. But you just I think you're right. We could, we could try it, yeah. I think the other option is to wait in place. And I think if you don't get attacked... Um, by the enemy, then your crewmen get a chance to rest as well. Honestly, I can't remember. I could pull up the code, but maybe. I don't think so, actually. I think it's only if um, if you get this random event, your crew feel less tired. No, okay, so it's That's like a... completely random. All right, let's 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 call in for resupply then, because I'm pretty sure that will give them a chance to rest. Maybe we can get some more HE shells by the, while we're at it. No, it doesn't seem to be any available. Um, but we can load up on H on AP. So that's good. And yeah, I think they lost. Yeah, they lost a little bit of um, of fatigue. There's still fatigue, but it's not nearly as bad. Um, if I remember correctly, if they have a higher, um, I think it's grit stat, they'll feel less fatigue during the day, or it's less likely that they'll get fatigued. Okay, so what's in that seven point seven zone there? Uh, armored, armored car, assault gun, and an APC. That's a lot, 
And uh, our only other our only other choice is the anti tank gun. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, between these two, I'd rather I'd rather face the anti tank gun honestly because we can pull yeah, in a lot of support. support. Yeah. I would say unit support and air strike, both of these. Um, and advancing fire as well because anti tank guns could be pinned by advancing fire and it doesn't cost us anything. I, I, you want to attack the anti tank gun? Oh, I you would... were you were thinking of the other one. Okay, in that case, I'd say... Um... So my reasoning was anti-tank gun because it's probably just one unit and we can pull ah, okay. in three... We can pull in all these different types of support. We could throw some artillery support on there. Basically, we just bring in all the guns we have. Um, I would call in artil artillery instead of air support because I think the chance for aircraft to spot anti-tank guns is pretty low. Mm. At least that's my experience. Um... Artillery, on the other hand, is pretty effective against guns. All right. Sounds like a good plan. Of course, we may not and even need some resistance at all, right? Some anti-infantry support or maybe some artillery, something like that, could be useful. Mm, yeah, so anti-infantry, uh, we could get a half-track, um, heavy machine gun, rifleman, or flamethrower. Um, artillery, we could get a light mortar, um, an 18-pounder, a 25-pounder, or a sexton. Um, I'd go for the artillery. Yeah, especially because I think it looks at the moment that infantry units aren't that aggressive. Like that Piet unit basically just stayed put the whole battle. So um, it's probably something I'll have to work on for the future. I've been thinking about that. If you call an infantry, are they going to do anything? Or are they basically just going to stand around? Um, you know, That's because if we get an M3A1 hop track, it's going to get destroyed really quickly. Yeah, it's, it's not really an anti-tank gun. And... My experience is artillery is really good in good weather when there's a lot of visibility on the battlefield and they can take long range shots. Right. They they can destroy enemies very quickly. Whereas in you, when you fight in uh, like um, heavy rain or something like that, infantry is more useful because they are more of a um, close range unit. Right. But even if it's just a mortar team, they will be quite useful against the gun. Once they start firing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you're going to see shortly. We're going to get the artillery support, and then yeah, we end up see it. we end up getting one support unit. One more a team. Okay. Better than nothing. It could uh, it could be help. So if we know this is likely an anti tank gun, do we want to get in close or do we want to keep our distance? Do we want to try like an overrun attack with our coax? Yeah, usually I I try to do that when I started playing this game and I made some very bad experiences with that. It's really risky, um, isn't it? I, I try to stay away from them, especially because we have a very good main gun, a very accurate main gun. We can rely on a long-range battle here. I would actually turn around and drive past the mortar team because then the anti-tank gun might start attacking the mortar team instead of us, which right. is a bit cruel, I guess, but it might work. That's war. All right, we've, we've spotted the anti-tank gun. It's a pack 40. Yeah, okay. It doesn't really matter to us. I mean, it's the same. If it were more powerful, it would it would destroy us just as bad. Um, it's it's still a very, it's a very serious threat to a Sherman Hall, that's for sure. Oh, it's pointed at us already. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah they're, they're ready to go. <laughs> Um, one thing I added, um, I think I think it's going to be in this major update, is at the bottom right there, you can see um, in a moment, you can see the kind of the AI status. So the AI at the moment is holding because we moved into their territory. So it's a gun, it's not going to do very much, but um, if it were another type of unit, it would be more likely to kind of hold its ground. And they're alert, so for one reason or another, they, they are aware that something is going on. If they were lax, then it would probably take them an extra turn to kind of get organized, you know, get the gun up and running, scan the terrain, figure out what their target is. But like you said, they're pointed at us, they're alert. They could they could fire off, easily fire off a shot in the next turn. Um, this, this is a bad situation. Yeah, oh. yeah. Why did you take my, <laughs> why did you agree with me that it was a good idea to come and attack this <laughs> anti-tank gun? It ended up being a horrible idea. Um, so yeah, turn and try to move away. We'll see how well it goes. All right, it ended up being okay. Um, 
we put a little bit more distance and we got that light mortar team a little closer to the enemy. As you'll see in a moment. Yeah, some meat shields. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah. If we moved, we have almost no chance of sh of hitting anyway. So there's no point firing the gun. Uh, okay. Well, it's, it ended. Yeah. You'll see in a moment. It was a good thing that we moved. Um, I think it probably helped us a lot because the pack forty is firing at us, and it's going to hit our. If it hits, it's going to hit our rear armor, but it, it won't really matter one way or another. It would have been just as bad on the front, I think, almost. Oh boy! So we'll see. Ha! Ah, all right. Whew. So far, so good. The uh, fate, fate, <laughs> fate seems to be smiling on us today. So far. As you'll see in just a moment. Excellent. All right, so now basically, I think the idea is to pivot and use the HE rounds. Well, we could withdraw. You might you might want to think about it because they've, they've started firing at us and they might hit us next turn and and yeah, he already has one point of. Yeah. Hmm. It's one of the most important lessons you have to learn in this game. There's no shame in withdrawing if if the odds are not in your favor. And I think at present, yeah, they definitely aren't. We've got a pretty good chance we're just, because we're at long range. Yeah, I think it's actually um, always a success if if all enemy units are at long range. Okay. If we do, though, then the, our only other option, unless this zone gets taken over by allied forces, is that other one with the assault gun and the APC and stuff. But... Or we could wait wait for the front line to move. Or maybe somebody will attack us. That's also an option. Yeah. Yeah, I think considering how weak we are against, against anti-tank guns, um, discretion, better part of valor and all that. Run away! So we got that. And our allies aren't doing too well. They've actually lost a bit of ter um, a bit of territory. It's a battle mission, so. Hmm. So if I've if I've coded this correctly, if we were to now go right back into that same zone, there would be the same gun. There would be another pack forty. Yes. There. Yes. It's not like it gets regenerated or something. It's going to be exactly you, the same. You can get lucky, and maybe there's just no resistance the second time you arrive. Then yeah, they might have packed up. And... The enemy just, you know, they just withdraw, and you can take the zone. Uh, maybe we can check the resistance level again. Just it, recon again. It's three, so pretty good chance of moving in and finding nobody. If it doesn't work, we can just with retreat again, or maybe this <laughs> do a time little dance. The, the pack, this time the puck will actually not be ready for us. We'll see. Uh, all right, <laughs> or there's so, an ambush. Uh, unit support. Yeah. And actually, artillery support. Maybe it'll actually do something this time. Yeah. So let's try it again. Okay. You'll see in a moment. You were right. No resistance. So the pack forty. Yeah, I guess they packed up and, uh, and went somewhere else in the meantime. Or the the heroic mortar team. Delta stayed, Delta. stayed, stayed, and won the day. <laughs> the tank squad they was withdrawing. Really, they must have been really happy about watching three Sherman tanks withdraw behind them. That was good for morale, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could make a whole movie about their exploits and how they won the day <laughs> while while we um, withdrew. All right, so we have, uh, it's getting pretty close to the end of the day, but I bet we could take at least a couple more zones, depending on how much resistance we meet. So we've got two zones in front of us. We also have the one next to us. That's probably the place to go. Oh, another anti-tank gun, though. Um, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise there's, there's a strength five with a support weapon team, an assault gun, and an infantry squad, and a strength seven with an armored car, assault gun, and APC. We're basically, it's, it's kind of the same kind of situation, right? Do we go for the anti-tank gun and hope that we just take it unopposed? That, that it's not there, yeah. Hope that it's not there. Um, 
Well, it worked so well the first time. Yeah, okay. Okay, do it. We can always withdraw if we don't die in the first turn. Uh, if we don't die in the first day. turn. Alright, so you'll see in a moment, no resistance. We captured the area. Um, I think okay. there's the less than an hour left in the day. We might still be able to reach that objective on the very left of the map. Get some extra points. Is uh, it a capture or it's a capture? Uh, yeah. objective? It, it's a capture, so it won't yeah, be as we easy. Won't be able to, won't be able to do that, no. We can perhaps take one more zone. Let's see. So I'm just looking around. Might as well use recon them all because no matter what happens, one more battle and I think we'll use up the rest of our day. Oh yeah, all right. I I I, uh, I didn't estimate the time properly and basically we spent the rest of the day reconning to see what was around, and then <laughs> the sun set. Okay. The sun set and then that was it. Uh, so I'll just let you catch up. All right, so not yeah, not a bad day. We survived, which is always good. Um, six battles. Nine um, map zones captured. I'll have to fix that because technically it's a zone. The area, I think, is what I refer to as like when you scroll into a whole new page of the map. Um, we captured nine zones. Yeah. Uh, we had three gun hits, five vehicles destroyed, didn't destroy any guns, ourselves at least, and one unit uh, uh, of infantry destroyed. And then it gives you a detailed list. Sturm Panzer, that was really lucky that it, that it worked out because otherwise it could have been really bad. So 51 victory points for the day. Not too shabby. And no injuries. I just realized that when you think everything through, you can spend about 90 minutes on a single combat day in this game. This is amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, especially yeah. because we're kind of talking things through as well. We're not just reacting and kind of, you know, immediately making decisions. We're talking through decisions and sometimes explaining things as well. Um, to the four viewers out there who aren't ourselves, um, who may not have played the game before or are just learning new things about the game. Yeah, so not bad. So our commander is, he's at a higher level, so he's going to need a little bit more experience before he gets a level up. But the other three crewmen each got a level up and an advanced point. Um, one thing that you might not realize, it has no effect on gameplay yet, but these uh, moons in the upper left here, they're dynamically generated based on the calendar day. So oh, I can't okay. remember. I can't remember what the calendar day was. Um, was it August? August nineteen forty four, but whatever that day in nineteen forty four, there was a full moon or pretty close, pretty close to it. And you'll see as you go through the through the month, the the moon will change. It will wax and wane and and things. Um, I thought that was a nice little detail. Eventually, it might have an actual yeah. effect, but now it's just it's just for show basically. Nice. Okay. It was one of those things I figured out I could do it, and I just wanted to do it. It doesn't actually have uh, an effect. But in the future, if you can have night battles, or if you can continue fighting after sunset, if there's a full moon, that that would mean very different visibility than if there were a new moon, right? If there was no, you know, not as much moonlight in the sky. So. Yeah, cool idea. Yeah, not too bad. So here you can see um, sort of uh, the brief journal of the day, um, at what times... We entered a zone or captured it, destroyed different units. Nobody's in the field hospital. Our crew all survived. So yeah, not too bad. Shall we do at least uh, the start of another of another day? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, see how far we get. I think I was planning to go for maybe thirty more minutes. So we'll see how far okay. we can get, and uh, and how we it can goes. give the the gunner, the loader, and the driver one more skill each. Sounds good. Do you have one in mind? Um, maybe time on target for the gunner, or or there, there are some other good ones actually. That, like target tracker isn't bad if target is moving. Crack, sh crack shot is just crack shot is just a general to hit bonus, no matter what. Um, yeah, that's also um, nice. Um, does he already have target tracker? Or is it not in there? Let's see. I think it's a, I think it's a later skill. I think you need crack shot first, and then once you have that, ah. then you can add target tracker. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's go. For, let's go with crack shot here. Just a better chance to hit. Always good. Yeah. 
And for the loader, fast hands for increasing rate of fire. Or ammo scrounger. We didn't or really use, scrounger. but we, we didn't use much HE. I guess we could HE. have. Yeah. If if we had had different sorts of encounters, I suppose we could have needed a little bit more. Um, I think just for just for this little bit of the day, I'll just add fast hands, um, because getting those okay. extra rate of fire shots could be could be really helpful. Especially as a Sherman, we have very low armor, so we have to focus on getting the first kill. We can't get into these long, drawn-out battles of back and forth because basically one hit on us, and it's going to be a bad day. Um, and for the driver, maybe eye for cover so that we have a better chance of getting hauled down. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, let's go the next day. Our crewman's been promoted. Congratulations. So you'll see in a moment um, as the stream catch up, catches up, the next day is August 14th. Uh, it's an advanced mission, so there won't be as much resistance as, as the last day. It'll be kind of lower resistance overall, and it'll be easier to capture zones and to move around the map. Yeah, I think our loader starts as a private, but he just got a... Uh, promotion to private train okay and that gives him extra and advance points you can give him ammo scrounging now okay and then maybe something like like eagle eye because he can also spot targets yeah yesterday we did that a lot right because um if you don't think you're going to be firing you can get the loader to actually open up the hatch and do some spotting for you early on in the battle that's good if i remember correctly i don't think the sherman two and five have loader hatches um it's only the fire among canadian and, and sort of commonwealth shermans i think it's only the firefly that had a loader hatch otherwise it was just the commander who had a hatch up top i think that's the case if i remember correctly so yeah let's get started um so as you can see in this the second day we still have the three he shells that we didn't use yesterday and we can now uh, load up extra ones. And I'll get yeah, rid of some as many as we can. Then th We actually have 14 HE shells now. That's not too bad. Should be more than enough to survive for the next 27 minutes or so. But we'll see. And yeah. we can destroy 82 more German tanks. Could be enough. If we have enough time. Cool, I guess. <laughs> Should be. Um, all right, just taking a look around the map, doing initial recon. Um, there's one objective close to us that's a recon objective, so that would be easy to grab. Um, there's a capture one. There's two capture ones further up the map. Uh, looking at the expected resistance, um, in the to the left of us, there's a support weapon team. Upper left, there's an APC and an infantry squad, and then there's an armored car. Yeah, it's, it's so different when you do an advanced mission because in this area, there isn't nearly as much enemy resistance. It's much more scattered. And um, That yeah, number two zone looks good because it leads us straight to the objective, and we should be able to deal with some infantry and an APC. I would think so, yeah. Um, worth bringing in unit support or save it for later? I'd save it for later. With a bit of luck, there won't even be a fight here. Hopefully not. Okay, so we, we captured it and opposed. So you'll see in a moment. I'll just grab that recon objective. And I'm going to head up the road because our allies captured it anyway, so... Our allies are doing too well. It's, it's tough keeping up with the front lines. Ooh, stormy. That's always the feeling you have in this game, and then you run into a when you run into a king tiger and die in a ball of fire or something. Yeah, so. everything's going great until all of a sudden it's not. <laughs> until it doesn't, yes. Until it isn't. All right, so we've got self-propelled AA gun. I'm trying to remember what that is for late war Germans. Have, the Germans even have that. Hang on. Uh, I 
can't remember what it is. They should if it's in if it's in uh, the campaign. Because it could be a it could be a false report, you know. Maybe it's yeah. something. Maybe it's a I don't know a Stuck, and they think it's an anti-aircraft gun or something like that. Possible, um, but normally even false reports will give you something that's plausible, like something that could be on the map, but in this case isn't. I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to figure out exactly what this is, because I can't remember. Um, then we have a yeah, medium you... tank and assault gun. Yeah, we can follow the road. I'd say, yeah, with some advancing fire, yeah. should be good. Should be okay. So one consequence of that storm rolling in, and uh, it's now overcast, misty, and hot. Sounds like an interesting August day. Um, we can't call in air support now because, at this time, aircraft uh, rely on visually visually sighting landmarks on the ground and visually sighting targets. Of course, so we did have air support, but for the moment, it's not available to us. And in the German campaign, you learn to appreciate this because it also means you can't get strafed by p-47s uh, so it's a good it's a good day it's when overcast. it's when it's an overcast day yeah yeah it's a good day when the when the weather is terrible uh unit support do you think i don't think we need it for a two we'll see we gotta we gotta trigger a battle sometime um No, you're right. Uh, you'll see in a moment. No resistance here either. So now I'm suspicious because we're going to run into something eventually. Yeah, I, I'm saying the next one is going to be an encounter, no matter what resistance level it is. Yeah, I think more likely. More you likely don't get you don't get lucky three times in a row in this game. No, it's not how I planned it. Okay. So we have an assault gun and a support team, and two infantry squads as the being the report. Question is, do you want to follow the road, or do you want to go for that objective on the right through the fields? I think maybe grab the grab the objective on the right and then head over to the other objective if possible. Yeah, then I'd say don't underestimate infantry. Call in some unit support, some anti-infantry unit support. Excellent idea. Use advancing fire and then just then hopefully we can take these guys out without too much trouble. All right, so there's a battle coming up. Got some good support. You'll see in a moment, um, we're facing two enemy units of some type. Um, I think they're either going to be infantry squads or small teams. I don't think the recon could get it that wrong, that it's actually you know a tiger or something. Um, but we have two rifleman squads of our own. And um, yeah, you can see it now. One of them is at close range, so I think our first prior priority has to be putting yeah. distance between us and them. I would drive past the past our own infantry because then they can engage the first German infantry unit over there. Yeah, good idea. They can start attacking them with rifles and grenades. And that's good. So the reports were accurate. It is two rifleman squads. Just let you catch up. There's a nice little battle going on. Yeah. So you saw the grenade attack. Yeah, and then the enemy uh, unit attacks back. And our ally is uh, reduced, so it's not going to be as effective. I think we can put some machine gun fire on these guys there, support the infantry from a safe distance. And loader, loader has nothing to do, I don't think, so it doesn't need to be on. These battles can get pretty crazy, by the way. I've seen some battles with the new version where I had like four different units on each side. Yeah, no, because if, if then happen. some enemy reinforcements come in and some allied reinforcements come in, it can get very interesting. Yeah. I love that about the new version. It's kind of like historically accurate, right? Where you think something is going to be very straightforward, but then in the event, who, things happen on the, bat the battlefield you could never expect, and uh, it can just all go crazy. So you saw we and, we fired, but it had no effect. And at the same time, it doesn't happen very often, so it's always a sort of special event yeah. on a combat day when you 
get an actual battle between uh, multiple squads of infantry or vehicles. And you never, like you but say, you, know, you never really know when it's going to happen or when, when all these different factors are going to, going to come together. Lots of grenades being thrown. They don't actually use their rifles very often. <laughs> it's Maybe. kind of funny. Yeah. It's like they have a they have a rifle, they have a Lee Enfield rifle in their hands, but instead they'd rather just throw a grenade. Um, yeah. I'm guessing that at this range the grenades are so much more effective that the AI is always going to pick that option rather than the rifles. I'll have to look at that because it shouldn't be always, you know, grenades, grenades, grenades. And they should be able to use both really in the same turn. Or at least, you yeah. know, some grenades and some rifles. But... All right, so I'll, just, I'll let you catch up. Not a whole lot has happened. There's been some firing back and forth. Yeah, our riflemen get pinned, but that's about it. Otherwise, nothing. Should we change our tactic or just keep keep no, firing no, from just the distance? Shooting. Yeah, we're not losing shooting. anything, I suppose. That's good. Got some good firepower on them. Well, so far we haven't accomplished a whole lot. Um, we've expended a lot of bullets and managed to lose both of our support units. <laughs> okay, but we're this still, is going great. We're still alive for the moment. <laughs> so yeah, this, um, this strategy has worked so well, let's keep using it. But we're still alive anyway, that's, that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Unlike the infantrymen, but whatever. <laughs> this might be the rest of our combat day, just fighting with these these two <laughs> infantry squads. No, I think one of them's done now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see in a moment. We got we got rid of one of the squads. Thanks to um, some HE power from our squad mates. Um, now the other one, you think just keep the distance because we have such a good long barreled gun for the, the long distance firing? The question is, do you want to save HE shells or do you think we can expend a couple of them? I think this is what they're for because we have, we've got a good amount. And okay, yes, yesterday we didn't here. remove any. Stop firing HE shells, fair enough. One or two good hits should be enough to, to do this. Yeah, and because we can the just rotate is, the turret, um, it's actually a really good chance to hit. And if we move closer to them, they might also move closer to us in the same turn, and then we might get into trouble. Yeah, all of a sudden and you're in close combat that. range, and you get Molotovs, Panzerfausts, all kinds of horrible things coming in, right? I love the 99.5% chance to hit. Yep, and as soon as I miss one of these shots, I'll uh, I'll make a screen. I'll take a screenshot of that. <laughs> that should be an <laughs> that should be an achievement, right? 
that um, yes, you roll a ninety-nine point seven or something. Worst worst shot in the world, something like that. Okay, we've done it. Excellent. All right, so I think you'll see in a moment. It's not. Um, it's only strength two, so likely there won't be any resistance. But if we if we do find it, the medium tank in an infantry squad, I think that's that's handle. We should be able to handle that. It's doable. Yeah. Um, I do want to use. That's a very easy. That's a very easy capture objective. They're usually harder than this. Yeah, I guess it was just luck of the draw because um, yeah, usually it adds um, a, a good number of strength points to a capture objective. So yeah, I don't yeah. know why it's just two. Normally it's it's quite a bit higher. Yeah, let's, let's All right. You see in a moment there's going to be a battle. We've been ambushed. But otherwise nothing's happened yet. <laughs> That's what I get for saying it's an easy capture object. <laughs> <Yeah>. Ambush. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't bring in any unit support either, so it's just it's just we three tanks. What was, what I think was... that line, that this line that you just saw, indicates that they're they're already taking aim at us, or they're already <laughs> spawning us or something. So um, that's but... never a good sign. Yeah, yeah. I My think... guess is that the first the first unit is probably the infantry unit, and the one in the back is the tank. And um, yeah, they know we're coming. So drive away from the infantry and hopefully. Don't get hit by the tank, I guess. Yeah, um, you'll see in a moment. We spotted the tank. It's a Panzer three L. Um, so not too bad. Our, our armor that is actually a... it's some protection against. It has a fifty millimeter yeah, long barrel. Yeah, fifty millimeter gun. Yeah, that's not too terrible. Yeah, but I think now they have special ammo types as well. That thing might have APCR rounds. Yes, and they could actually kill us if they hit us. So. Let's be careful anyway. Absolutely. So um, try to put some distance between us and the infantry. That worked. Um, squad mates didn't do any attack. So that's good. Um, do you think the first priority is the infantry or the tank? The tank. Yeah. Take out the tank first. OK. Pivot towards it to have some armor protection, and then we can maybe spend one turn trying to reposition, I guess. And then we should start firing at it. We have the good thing is we have to smoke. Yeah, yeah. the smoke is going to protect us a little bit. That's nice. So pivot 180 these, degrees. Yeah, it's one of these random smoke clouds that I guess it's just a burning vehicle there. Yeah, something on the battlefield uh, is emitting yeah, smoke, and we yeah. happen to have, to have uh, run, run through it. We do have smoke grenades as well, but I haven't really found um, a good reason to use it yet. Yeah. It's it's harder to decide because it, it obscures your own view a little bit, but it obscures the enemy's view a great deal. So if you're worried about getting spotted, if you're worried about getting hit, it might be a good idea, but oftentimes it's better to just move or get into better terrain or something rather than just staying put and trying to put down smoke. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so pivot in place. Do you think it's worthwhile trying to get hull down? I mean, open ground. If you don't, um, I wouldn't waste... We're in open ground. I wouldn't waste too much time on that. Just start shooting. Yeah. Because one hit should be enough to take out that Panzer Drive. That's all we need. And then Panzer we can drive. focus on the infantry. Good thing it wasn't a Panzer Fear. That would have been, that would have been much worse. With the seventy, yeah. with the seventy-five. Okay, so pivot, AP, ready rack. Not great. Uh, we have some nice bonuses from the crack shot skill, which is good. And obviously, in future, in from next turn onward, um, we'll have an excellent chance to hit because we won't have uh, we won't have pivoted. I'll let you catch up in the stream. It's uh, 
It's not good news. As you'll see in a moment. Uh, at least it's AP though. It's not APCR. Uh, okay. So we have we have a chance to survive it, and he may miss as well, right? It'd be like a sixteen percent chance to penetrate, something like that. Let's see. So not great, but um, at least it's survivable. There's so many other tanks and tank destroyers in late war German forces where. If you're a Sherman and you get hit, that's it. You know, forget about it. Yeah, they missed us. Okay. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Don't e we don't even need the fate points. We've got luck on our side. You know, that's one of these quotes that could be on your grave gravestone. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. We'll see. We'll see how the rest we of this battle. We don't even need. We. I was. I'm so sure we don't <laughs> need these fate points. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> 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 famous, yeah, famous last words, as it were. Um, yeah, but luckily, we got a hit, so that's yeah. that's going to go right Yeah, through. that's a kill. Okay. So just have this infantry squad left. Um, just trying to think. I'd say use I'd say use um, AG on it because we can always get resupply um, after the next turn. I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream I think after this battle, so it won't matter all that much. It's not gonna be a long term campaign, but playing it as if it were. Um, do you think it's worth using AG or just keep or use the, the coax for a bit? I, I try to be conservative in situations like this. Conservative with the ammunition. I, I would actually use machine gun on this one. Okay. And I think the machine gun is also more accurate when there's smoke around you. Oh, right, it's not as affected yet. That, that's also something that is um, worth thinking about here. But it, it's not really a big deal either way. It's just an infantry unit at medium range. Not a threat right now. Yeah, the, if it does move in just one hex, though, then all of a sudden it's, it could be a big threat to us if it decides to do the close combat attack. Um, but hopefully yeah. between us and the other two Shermans, it won't get, it won't get that far. But we actually have to have to hit it first. Yep. And the other two tanks have unlimited HE, so we should really leave it to them to put the high explosive down, right? Rather than using our limited supply. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! You're right. That sound effect is really something, isn't it? You'll see in a moment. Um, yeah. Sniper. Well, you'll see. Are we all buttoned? Are we all buttoned up? Yeah, we lost our oh, coax oh, no. MG. Oh, the machine gun broke. Oh. The, the one machine gun we have on the tank uh, has broken. Okay. Uh, but at least we hit well, it. I guess... Oh, here's interesting. All right, so here, this may be a bug. Um, we maintain rate of fire. Will it allow us to fire again with a broken gun? No, it won't. Okay, good. Um, but it's, it, won't, it, it just it just it displays the message. But you yeah, can't okay, it. good. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll make a note to not even show not even show the prompt because obviously uh, it's not possible with a broken gun. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we'll take them out. That's going to be a lot of firepower. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. All right. I'll let that catch up. But as you can imagine, it's a very good result. Yeah, 32 firepower. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there's going to be much left of them. Awesome. So not, not too bad for the start of the day. It's not even noon yet, and we have 26 victory points. Um, we do have a broken coax, which we can't fix. It's not jammed. It's completely broken, so we can't fix it during the day. But if we're careful, I think, then yeah, we should be able to have a good a good rest of the day, especially on an advanced mission where the uh, resistance is usually lower. Yeah. Nope, Florin, you're kind of you're kind of cutting out a bit. Uh, no, 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 I wasn't oh. saying anything, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. All right. <laughs> Discord is working as, as intended, then. Okay. 
Uh, so I think I'm going to end today's stream here because it's been almost two hours. Um, but this has been really enjoyable. Thanks very much for doing this with me. Uh, with yeah, me thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Um, so hopefully the, the handful of you who are actually watching the live stream, you've seen a little bit about what is coming in version 7. Um, I'm going to move this onto the main branch later on this afternoon. Um, if you are an avid player of the game and you have a campaign in progress from version 6, you can always switch over to the legacy branch and finish it up. Um, the reason why I have these big version numbers is basically because um, if I need to change something very core to the game, change the way that it stores data in the saved game, it's really hard to keep compatibility, backwards compatibility with older versions. So I, I try not to do it too often, but sometimes I do need to make a clean break with the older version of the game and just start afresh to add in new things like this different system for for spawning enemies and the unit support and all that all that kind of stuff. But I always keep a legacy version open so you can finish it up, move on to the and then before moving on to the new one. Um, I'm sure there's going to be bugs and pr hopefully not too many crashes in this new version. But of course, as always. I'll work on fix fixing them uh, as soon as possible, as long as people tell me about it. And I'm, I'm actually really pleased that it didn't crash today. I was I was worried. I had this um, I had this like emergency um, like image already that I had on before the stream started um, in case I needed to shut the game down and fix something in the back end and then boot it back up again. Um, but yeah, luckily I didn't I didn't need it. But now I have it right. I, ha one thing I have it for the future. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. There's one thing you could try out. You could do it after the stream, actually. Could can you still use advancing machine gun fire with a broken machine gun? I'm I'm guessing yes, but of course it shouldn't. It that shouldn't be possible. Yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll have to look into that as as well because it's something I just added recently. I probably didn't think. Oh, what if their MGs are, are broken? And um, there's going to be more work that I need to do because really it should take into account your whole squad, right? And look at well, let's add up all of the MGs yeah. that are working and see what sort of firepower you could apply, and then have the chance of pinning enemies based on that. So yeah, it's on it's on my it's on my lengthy to do list as uh, as something to work on. Okay, it's just um, it's just a real step forward this update because now you no longer just um, blindly move into zones and you have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I think just kind of on, on your own out there, just your tank squad. Now you can call in unit support, you can have allied units on the battlefield, and at the same time you can predict what's going to happen, and it changes the gameplay completely. It's It makes it more complex, really, it gives you more decisions really to innovative, make. Really innovative, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a real improvement, because in the first um, the first Armored Commander, and in the original, the, the board game, the Patton's Best board game, that was kind of the original at inspiration years ago for all of this there were these very abstract allied forces out there and sometimes basically when you were fighting a battle they would come in and destroy one of your enemies and it was good in a way because sometimes it would be welcome and you'd say hooray i'm not going to get killed today because somebody helped me out but it was kind of frustrating too because you didn't have any control over it and you didn't really know when it was going to happen it was completely random so i'm hoping this system is a nice is a nice balance of keeping things more or less abstract you have this kind of unit support. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to track them. You just call them in when you need them and they help you out. Um, but you actually see the battles take place. It's not kind of abstract saying, oh yes, you had some allies come in and they were destroyed. You actually see the grenades being tossed between the dueling infantry squads and, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and like you say, combined with the, um, this, the new recon feature, now, you have a lot more decisions and a lot more thinking to do when you move around thinking, what sort of support do I want? Is it worth risking to move into this zone based on what I suspect is here? And you're never 100% sure that the report is accurate. It could always be a little bit off, right? So, yeah. And at the same time, you, um, you, know, you can always deal with anything, basically. You just need to call in the right kind of support. So I, I've been playing the Italian uh, desert campaign a little bit with one of these terrible machine gun <laughs> tank heads. Yeah. These crap tanks, like worst tanks in the game. But I've actually been doing pretty well because when I need the support, I call in the support. And, yeah. Or if it doesn't work out for me, I retreat. And this is the kind of play style that can get you through a tough campaign as well. And it ends up being a very different sort of game. I mean, like I said, the original board game, Patton's Best, was based on Sherman's, basically. 
And even in the first um, Armored Commander, it was still all Shermans, really. And the idea was that you're in a pretty good tank, but it's not the best tank out there. You have to survive, you're vulnerable, you have to be careful. Um, but at the same time, the idea was that Shermans would, could operate more or less independently with some support, not like a little tankette with a machine gun. You can't really take on much of anything. You need to have all of these allies and friends with you combined, you know, sort of in a combined operation in order to do things. So hopefully one thing that this does is it makes the, the more specialist tanks more playable because you don't have to be a kind of an all-rounder in yourself and your squad. You can pull in individual strengths and abilities from your support units when and as needed um, when you encounter them on, on the map. So, All right. Yeah. I think that was pretty cool. Me too. That was fun. No, I enjoyed this a great deal. Thanks very much for doing it with me. Uh, thanks to those of you who saw, uh, watched the stream. And I'll, I've recorded um, I've recorded this. I think I missed the first few seconds, but I've recorded almost all of this. I'll upload it to my YouTube channel as well. And I'll link to it from uh, from the Steam page if you want to. If you missed it and you want to watch it later, or you are watching it now, anyway. All right, thanks. Thanks very much, Florian. Take care. Okay, goodbye.